We learned yesterday that this Shabbat, Matot Masei, comes in the middle of one of the worst times in the year. The three weeks when we're remembering with broken hearts the destruction of the temple. <clears throat> it began on the 17th day of Tammuz. That's when they broke into the walls. And on Tisha B'Av they destroyed both the second, first and the second temples. But strangely, in, right in the middle of all this negativity, as we say when we finish reading this week's Torah portion, we say, Chazak, Chazak, Vanit Chazek. Be strong, be strong, and we will be strengthened. And the Rebbe says the word Chazak implies three times. So it's three times three. Chazak, Chazak, Vanit Chazek. Power and more power, more power. So the Rebbe said that's the whole essence of what the Jewish people are. The Jewish people are here, like we just finished learning in the Mimer. The Jewish people are here to transform the world into a holy place. That the potential, the good potential, which is concealed in everything in the world, and especially every human being in the world, and especially in every Jew, will be revealed. That's the idea of holiness. Holiness is life. Godliness. God is the source of all life, the source of all good. <clears throat> and God also put, creates the potential to do the opposite. And that's what we have to overcome. The problem is that this the opposite, it feels good, and it's very and, and sometimes the opposite is what we call nature. Sometimes nature can be our biggest enemy. Sometimes, not always. On the other hand, nature is our biggest friend. If it wasn't for nature, we wouldn't be alive. We wouldn't. So the Rebbe says, therefore, we need strength. So the Rebbe explained to us that <clears throat> this can be expressed in the number one, two, and three. Number one means, let's say, the Jewish people are on their own. Number two means that there's an opposition. Number three means there's a resolution. Right? They say, how do they say it? What? Thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. Oh, that's a little bit forgettable. I read. I don't remember where I read that. I don't even think it was a Jewish book. But anyway, there we go. So that's the three. And the three is corresponds to the first temple, which that was God alone with the Jewish people in the time of King Solomon came from above to below. The number two represents the second temple, which that came from the Jewish people themselves from below to above. And the third temple, which we're awaiting any instant, it's supposed to be revealed from heaven, will have both. That's the number three, which contains both. The Rebbe said, okay, but there's also something much higher than that. Not just a synthesis or whatever you want to call it. There is an essence of truth, which is above all that. That's represented by a number that's higher than three. And that's the number four. And that can be also illustrated by the, this month, and we're just finishing the month of Tammuz, fourth month, and also the fourth book of the Torah, number four. So number four represents a level of power, of godliness, of truth, which is above just this ability to make synthesis and something like that. And then there's also the number five, because we're starting now the fifth book of the Torah. We're also going into the fifth month, month of Av. Fifth month from from um, <clears throat> from from Nisan. In, in Judaism, it's called the fifth month. Okay. The month of Av. So that is so something even higher. And this is, says the Rebbe, this is also represented by, there's some people say that the Jewish people have gone through four exiles the last the la three exiles the last one will be the fourth what we'll go out of that's what is it uh, egypt and uh, babylon and uh, madai and paras and then the fifth one will be rome and some people say that madai and paras is just one in any case th there'll be the fourth redemption and some people say it's the fifth redemption that's the f that's the last one and that, in any case, 
The third temple will be eternal. The fifth, or the whatever you want to call it, the last redemption will be an eternal redemption. What does it mean, eternal redemption? That there simply won't be any cessation that won't stop the good. Good won't stop. That's the way things are supposed to be. <clears throat> right? That there, it, God is essentially good and will just feel that God is creating us and that he loves us and that the Torah is even higher than that. <clears throat> comes from the source. In your nosef, there's something else also in this Shabbat that we're coming to a kashur with Erev Shabbat, which is right Friday. Like it says, one who works on Shabbat will eat on Shabbat. And this, these whole mime, all these memoriam that were said over here, the calendar came out like all the the dates came out one day in the week before us right now so here the Rebbe is speaking that the first day of when of of the month of of it came out on Friday by us the first day of of the month of of is going to come out on Shabbat okay but it's basically the same thing instead of Friday the Rebbe is saying that Friday, Yom Shishi, we have to insert Shabbat. Because by us it comes out Shabbat. But it's, it's eternal what the Rebbe says. So let's all. So it says, it says in our Torah portion, it talks about this date, the first day of Av. It says, Vayala Aaron, a Kohen, that Aaron, a Kohen, went up on this place called Hor Hahar. And he died there. <coughs> When did he die there? It says clearly in the Torah, in the fifth month, that's the month of Av, the first day of the month. In other words, Yom Ahilula Shal Aaron a coin. This is the day explicitly stated in the Torah, explicit in the Torah, exactly the date that Aaron died. In the Torah, in the five books of Moses, for sure, it does not say the exact date of anybody's passing away. Could be in the whole entire Torah. I didn't check it up. But in the, in the five books of Moses, for sure, it talks about people dying. Abraham died, Yitzhak died, Yaakov died. It says Yaakov didn't die. But anyway, Yaakov died. When Moshe died, it also says Moshe also didn't die. It says, there's, there's a Gomorrah. <clears throat> but it talks about when Yosef died, people died. Eh? Right, all the generation died, but it doesn't say anybody exactly the date. Only Aaron. This idea that the day of death, the passing away of Aaron, misparish b'torah shebachtav, it is clearly stated in the written Torah, b'chodesh ha-chamish b'echad l'chodesh, is a chidosh, it's a known thing. It's not found anywhere in the Torah. Not by Moshe, not by Miriam, not by Achosam, not by Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. That it tells exactly the date. Mistabal Omar. Now, now again, we have to remember who wrote the Torah? God wrote the Torah. So if it says a date over there that somebody passes away, this date must be very important. And the Torah is not just a history book. The Torah is a history book also, but it's certainly not just a history book. The essence of the Torah is, is it's the the word and the will and the wisdom of, of the creator of the universe, every letter. So therefore, it's important, it must be logical to say, that the content of this day, Maruma's Klalat Avoda, this is the whole idea of the service of Aaron, Aaron a Kohen, in his life. That was the day that his service was finished. Because all of the deeds and the Torah and the service of a person that he does his whole life is summarized on the day that he passes away. The same thing is also with Aaron. <clears throat> that was revealed from a, <clears throat> below, above to below and Paul Yeshua at Baker of Oritz and it fixes up the world. Uh, I mean probably you've, you've probably come to the awareness that people die, right? People die, people don't live forever. Even though, you know, if you're listening to this class, so, you know, you're doing pretty good up to now. You know, here we are, we're still alive. So maybe, maybe we won't die. Could be. But the chances are very, very slim that we won't. Like, you know, 100 to zero. 
Everybody dies. What are you going to do? So it says, why did God make it that way? It says, because everybody has, first of all, everybody was not supposed to die. People were supposed to live forever. But now that there's this exile and there's this confusion in the world, so we are given a certain amount of time to fix up this confusion, to fix up the cause of death. That's the way it goes. If we didn't have a certain deadline, huh? if we didn't have a certain stopping point, finishing line, then people would just say, okay, I'll put it off till tomorrow, no problem. But because they have a finishing line, so everybody's, okay, when a person does die, so his whole entire life becomes like one unit, one like capsule. All the good things that he did, things that he did for the Creator, for truth, for goodness, <coughs> all those things are eternal. Those things are eternal. And that, the main point, if he did it according to the Torah, then it comes and fixes up the world. So that's the whole idea of Aaron. What did Aaron do his whole life? And it's signified also by this date. The date is said exactly. We say that Aaron died. Good, we would know that. Why does the date? The date must have something important. In Yanoam, you had the main thing of Aaron. What was the special service of Aaron that the Torah has to tell us this date? The special thing about Aaron we can learn from the day that he passed away. Gomer Vishlemus of Oda saw that that is the day that he completed and completed all of his service because see if it says it says that the whole all the Jewish people saw that Aaron died and they die they wept for Aaron 30 days called Beit Yisrael all of the Jewish people all of the Jewish people cried for 30 days that's what the Torah says the men the women because Aaron would run after peace and he would put love between human beings. Like it says, it says in Pirkei Avot that Aaron beat, it says, you should be one of the pupils of Aaron. Love peace, pursue peace, love the creations, and bring them closer to Torah. In the Tanya, it's also explained. Even people, that the only good thing you can say about them is that they're creations of God. They have no, they didn't use... These people also bring them close to Torah. And it says, Vayishma, Kanani, it says that the Kanani, they heard when Aaron died, and they attacked. Because as soon as Aaron died, it says the clouds of honor that were surrounding the Jews and protecting them from all six sides, front, back, right, left, above and below, the clouds went away. As soon as the Kanani, and it says those, that was Amalek, he heard, it says, Alderich, they attacked the Jews. Alderich says similarly in our Torah portion. Shebe'em Shechem, says Aaron, as soon as Aaron died, it says also the same thing, Vayishma Kanani. He's talking about the journeys. The to teach you that the death of Aaron is a Shemua, <clears throat> is, what did it mean? How did they know that Aaron died? Because there was the rumor that the clouds of glory went away. Well, Bapi or Akesha, what's the connection between these two things that stress the death of Aaron and the completion of Aaron's service, that he ran, that he, that he pursued peace, and these clouds that surrounded the Jews? What's the connection? Hamalam Yocheristan, and he covered the main novelty of these clouds that surrounded the Jews. Shahoya Besuchut Aaron. They were in the merit of Aaron. And also there was the man, the manna, and the water. These were three miracles that accompanied the Jews all the time and what basically kept them in existence. They needed water. That came in the merit of Miriam. They, they needed manna. That came in the merit of Moshe. And they needed protection. They were in the middle of a desert. That came in the, mer- the merit of Aaron. This, this is Aaron gave the clouds of glory and the water and the manna was in the merit of Miriam and Moshe. The man was given in a limitation. <clears throat> Everybody got a certain amount. The water, even though it's true that it wasn't exactly measured, but in Boim, Boofen, she's Chalkos, Lekal Echad Ve'echad. Each and every person drank what he needed, which is not the case. The clouds of glory... The clouds were there. They surrounded everyone equally. And it wasn't divided according to people. 
Sheikifu had called Ben Israel that it encompassed all the Jews. And that's the main thing of Aaron, that he loved peace and he pursued peace and he loved the creations and he brought them closer to the Torah. Mitzad had gashat nekudat because of this whole point, the stressing the whole topic of unity of all of the Jewish people, which is above any division. Okay, and we have to remind ourselves constantly, the Jewish people are different. The Jewish people are chosen by God to bring blessing to the whole entire world. That's the job of the Jewish people. The Jewish people, they are the caretakers, they are the, says the kohanim, Mamlechet Kohanim, they're the source of holiness, of life, of health, of meaning, <clears throat> of blessing, what we said, to the whole entire world. That's the job of the Jewish people. And it doesn't make any difference what type of a Jew it is, even if he doesn't even know he's Jewish. He's part of this special forces that are supposed to bring good to the whole world. And very few people realize this, and Aaron was one that did. And therefore, he realized that all the Jewish people, in that way, they are one big unit. And that's, but they, it can only work if there's harmony between them. For Yesh Lo Sif, and we can also add on, She'inyan said, this is also hinted at Aaron's name, Aharon. The hay and the Resh of our own is har mountain this is the thing of love why is it love it says that when god gave the torah to the jews he turned the mountain over their heads held the mountain over their heads so that they would accept the torah it explains what is the mountain the mountain is love like it says by abraham abraham was the example of love in the world abraham Aaron in some ways was even greater, but our, our Abraham, he was the example of love, and it says, har Avram called it a har. The, the har that he saw was, of course, the place where the holy temple was going to be built. It says, Abraham called it har, and Yitzchot called it a field, and Yit, Yaakov called it a house. Har, that the har is love. The Hakdam at the Aleph, and the reason he brought the Aleph first this indicates on the source of love. Aleph, this is the Aleph, the oneness of God. The letter Aleph is the letter, also the letters Pele. This is the source of all love in the world. That's what Aaron represented. Not just love, but the source of all love, and also love being expressed. Shalokhin, therefore, Aaron was Avaraba, big love. <clears throat> this is the difference between Avram and Aaron. Sha'av Shashneim, even though that both of them were in a way of love and kindness, nevertheless, the aspect of kindness and the love of Avraham was limited <clears throat> according to the world. It was our Abraham was before the Torah was given. So only he personally knew about God, but God wasn't revealed in the world yet. The aspect of Aaron, the love of Aaron was love which is totally above the creation. It could not be deterred or deflected by anything in the creation. Yeshlomo, we can also say that that's, so that's the Aleph and the Har. We can also say that the Indian of this great love is also hinted at the order of the letters of Aaron. Aleph and then He. This is the first letters of Ahava, love. And the Resh, Aha, Resh is Rabba. So we have a Hava Raba, big love. What about the Nun? What about the Nun of Aaron? This indicates that <clears throat> this love, which is the source of love and revealed love, but it comes down, <laughs> this shows that Aaron was able to bring this tremendous awareness of love of God and of the Jewish people. And from that, the whole entire creation, he was able to bring it lamata mata, below, below. <clears throat> also, the Jewish people, Animsa and Bedarga Tachtoni, even the Jewish people which are found in the lowest levels, Shein Bedugmas Otio Tatora, Shalamata Minashura, which this is compared to the letters of the Torah, which go below the line, right? The letter Nun, see all these letters that look at, all of them are go nice, 
even line there, there, all line, except up comes the noon. The noon goes below the line. Even the Jews that are below the line, Bishura, Ulamata Min Ashura, they're, they're, they're at the line, they're borderline case, borderline Jews and Jews that are below the border. Tugmas like the Jewish people, Shinim Shal Osius the Torah. The Jewish people are also compared to the letters of the Torah. Like it's known that the Jewish people in general are 600,000. This is the first letter, 600,000. Yesh, Yisrael. Yesh, Shishim. There are 60, 10,000 letters in the Torah. That's Yisrael. What does it mean? That that's the whole thing of Aaron. That the whole point of Aaron was that he brought this level of love, God's love which is totally above any division, and he brought that down to the letter Nun, to the lowest levels. Therefore, he had the power to join and to unite all of the details and all of the uh, confusion and, and uh, dissonance in the Jewish people. In even more detail, Murgash, the whole idea of Aaron, that he joined, unifying these two opposites, uh, the two opposites, of drawing down, like we said, the first temple, and going up, which is like the second temple. Or we said coming down, that's the matot, that's the staff, comes from above to below. Masay means join, going from below to above, like we just finished learning about the 42 journeys coming from below to above. Aaron was able to unite all opposites, even the opposites of coming down from above to below, blessing, and coming up from below to above, Service of God. Generally speaking, also Torah comes from above to below. Prayer comes from below to above. Mitzad, because our Aaron was such a high level. Shalomayla Mishalkos, he was above any sort of divisions. Therefore, by him coming down and going up with the thing. That's like the third temple. That was the main thing of Aaron, a Kohen. He was the Kohen. A Kohen served in the temple. But the main unique thing of the Kohen was the blessings of the Kohen. It's a mitzvah asset. It's one of the positive commandments, 613 commandments of the Torah, 248 positive commandments of the Torah, that the Kohanim should bless the Jewish people every day. They raise their hands. Huh? You ever see it? How do you do it like this? They raise their hands and they bless the Jewish people. That's a cool. Sheyesh Nugam Bezmanazeh also, even outside of Eretz Israel, every Yom Tov. And in Eretz Israel, there are so many places every day. And every prayer of the prayers in the daytime. Then there's the Shachri's prayer, uh, Shachri's and Musaf. But you do it's known that the blessing of the Kohanim, there are two good qualities, two unique things blessing and prayer together. Blessing and prayer together. Uh, short explanation, right? What, what is a blessing? A blessing. Is something that that God comes from God. It's waiting for you. A blessing that's waiting for you from God. And it comes down into the world. A blessing. The Kohanim, but it could be that a person has a lot waiting for him. We're learning a class in Kuntra Sumayan on, on Sunday night. Anyone who wants to join, just tell me. I'll give you the code. And over there it says that a lot of times a person... It's it decided for him on Rosh Hashanah that he should have riches and he should have everything. But what happens in the middle of the year? It just that the blessing just doesn't come to him, or it takes a long time to come, or the blessing comes in the wrong place, or the <coughs> <coughs> wrong time. <coughs> it says the idea of the Kohanim is that they brought these blessings down quickly. That was the thing of the the staff of Aaron that grew in, in Parshas Korach. Remember. They bring the blessings down quickly. But then there's something that, that's, that's uh, an, another way of bl- bringing blessing into the world, and that's called prayer. Prayer is not like a blessing. A blessing is something that's waiting for you, and the blessing brings it down into the world. Prayer is for something that's not waiting for you. It could be that it was decided on a person that he's supposed to be poor, that he's supposed to be, God forbid, poor, sick. But prayer can change everything. But it's not certain. It's not certain. <clears throat> blessings, if a blessing is given, the it's certain. But a prayer is not certain. But it draws from a higher source. 
So it says the blessing of the Kohanim has both. Aaron could bring down blessings that are waiting for you, but he could also bring down new things that weren't even waiting for everybody. Right? That, that's the, the, the things of prayer. Now, I hope he said, according to this, we can understand now what is being hinted at at the date of Aaron and the years of Aaron. Aaron, it says, was three and twenty and a hundred years, 123 years old when he died on Horahar. In addition to the fact that he was 120 years, which is the years that shows a complete number of years, that these were the num these were the years that Moses died. Like it says that Moses exactly filled his 20, 120 years. Like it says Mov, that the days of Moses were exactly 120 years. But in addition to this, in addition to this, Aaron lived Oj Shloshanim, three more years. 123 years. The number three, this hints at something even more than the than the than the completeness completeness of 120 years. This hints at Klaus Avoda that Aaron was number three. Remember what we said the number three before? That that's joining the two opposites by means of a third level which is above both of them. This hints at the third temple. So now we can understand what about the date of Aaron when he passed away. It says on the fifth month, on the first day of the month. Chodesh HaChamishi, this is what we said, the fifth level. Remember we talked about before. It says HaChamishi Laparo. This is a level which is higher than all levels. Everything is open. And the first of the month, this attached, this indicates the level of oneness, Achdut, that was above all limitation, all division. The idea of Aaron was that he was connected to this number of five, which we said before, that's like the five, fifth redemption of the Jewish people. It says the number five, it says the number five indicates complete openness. It says the, by Yosef, he said that uh, all of the riches in the world, all the riches, one-fifth of them goes to Paro. The fifth, so Paro means, the word Paro in holiness means Priya, means to be open. <clears throat> oh, let's, let's try to finish, all right? We can say that that's why the Torah tells us exactly that the death of Aaron was on the fifth month, on the first day of the month. This hints at the main point of all of his life that he was the number Echad, the number one, he died on the first day of the month, Echad was serving the one God, which is above all division, and includes all division. And this is also the way that he unified everything, elevating and bringing down prayer and blessing at the same time, and also uniting all of the different types of Jews. That's the letter Aleph, the first day. The date, the first day of, of of the fifth month, the number one indicates unity, that he unified all different types of service, prayer and blessing, and all the different types of Jews. And he, he loved peace and pursued peace. That all this is made by a level which has no comparison, <clears throat> this by, which has no connection to anything below it, which we said, what? That's the number five. We said the number one is the Jewish people. Two is the opposite. Three is a power which is higher and it draws godliness and unifies the other two. Four is something that's even higher than that. And five is the essence of God which is higher than all that. That's where Aaron got his power. The, he, to draw down this Aleph, number one, the first, first day, he got the power from the number five, the fifth month higher than the number three, also from four, etc. And we can add on that that's the fifth month and the first day of the month. This is a preparation for the sixth month, which is going to be the month of Elul Ani Lodi Lodi Li, which that we're going to talk about tomorrow. So what do we learn? What do we learn over here? One second. Let's, let's, I don't know if this is going to be yesterday
Yesterday I did this in the class in the afternoon, and the, the, what, I, what I brought up did not come up. It, was, it remained the same picture as before, so I was talking and <clears throat> propounding and everything, and pointing, and I was pointing to the, the, to the wrong thing. Okay. A brilliant and renowned scholar, this is Yom Yom, brilliant and renowned scholar that had tremendous gifts. He came to Liazna, to the first Rebbe of Chabad, and he started learning Hasidic. He was tremendously intelligent, and in a short time, he learned a tremendous amount, and he remembered everything. The first time he went into the first Rebbe of Chabad, he asked the Rebbe, Rebbe, tell me what I'm missing. I, I, he was genuine. I want to know what I'm missing. In my eyes, I seem to be complete, and I know that I'm wrong. I know that I'm wrong. Obviously, I'm missing something. I want your view. Tell me what it is, and I'll work on it. The Rebbe said, you don't lack anything. You're God-fearing. You're a scholar. He said, but what you do have to get rid of is a little bit is the chametz. What does it mean? A little bit of self-awareness. And you have to bring in matzah, which is surrender. If, if a person uses some sort of a vessel, <clears throat> an implement like a roasting spit, it says, could have been used with yeshut, when you feel a little bit of egotism, so you can imagine yourself to be a source of light. This type of pride repels the Shekhinah. Because God cannot dwell together with a person that's an egotist. Therefore, if you use a vessel, like a, let's say a, a skewer, you know, to roast meat on, <clears throat> and the meat is not kosher 100%, so the only way to make that kosher is that you have to put it into fire. So that the sparks of egotism are dissolved. In other words, think about how great God is and how amazingly lucky you are just to be created. And think of this, and that will get rid of your false egotism. Have a good day with Mashiach. Now, hope to see you at 3 o'clock today for the Chumash class. Shalom Uvracha.